So like I said, here is the QSL physical lab kit, physics lab kit and manual. This is what I'm going to be using for some of my experiments, not everything, but I'm going to be doing some experiments in here in my physics lab class that I'm teaching using a book called Conceptual Physics by Paul Hewitt. I have a slightly older edition than what is being published now that I'm using for that, but it's great for kids who are not necessarily planning liberal arts when they get to college or not doing college, but for people that want something that's going to focus on the concepts first and not the math. The math comes secondary. So this is going to be, I've already taken a little peek, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. I'm kind of going through and seeing what can I use in this kit to fit with that. And in my case, I'm with the kids that I'm working with, we're going to be walking through what the math is. So if there's math involved and the kids look at me and say, oh, I just don't think I know how to do this or I don't get it. I mean, you have to have had algebra to be in my class. You have to have had algebra one. But sometimes it's just easier to work together. And then that way, when they come up with problems later, they can do it. Anyways, what comes in the kit? You open the box up. And as you can see, the very top, I've opened it so I could take a peek. But um, you have Ziploc baggie, which is great for shipment so that when things arrive, your books aren't ruined. You have the complete lab manual. Ta-da. A little brochure. The solutions to the experiments. So these are results from actual experiments so you can get a sense of what people might be finding. And then something I love, which does not help me for my particular lab class, but um, for some, here are some of the major publishers that they know people are using their kit with. And so they'll outline. So say, I know Apologia is very popular. So second edition of Apologia, you come in here and it says, okay, here's the experiment order that's suggested. You start, you know, in the module, the introductory remarks, do this first scientific investigation. Then when you do the next module, do this scientific analysis and so forth so that you can see how it really lays everything out. And you can tell the numbers are not going in order of the way the book is. It's going in order of the textbook that the child's using. There are, is a list of supplies that come with the kit and a list of supplies that are not included. So for my first lab with my students, we're doing the intro A and B. We're going to be very optimistic that in an hour and 15 minutes we can do both. So I know this is what I'm going to need for these two things. And that's really simple. Some, a lot of them use this board and that's just so that you can really be attaching what you're going to be doing, the clamps. And most of this stuff is very easy to find, stuff you probably have lying around the house. For each of the experiments, they tell the goals, a little bit of background for the student. They have the procedure written out, so you ideally would want to order extra copies of this book for your students. In this case, we're doing little whirlies for the first one. So here's the page that they said make copies so that you might have extras, a little bit more procedure. And then here we've got the results and they walk through the questions. So it's not just, here's what you're gonna do, now you come up with what you need to record. They're really helping the students walk through that so that when they get to college level, they're gonna know. Then results, here's where they would record answer, you know, where the answers might come up. So in this case, they're saying there's different answers you might see, how much time people recorded for the fall, what they calculated out. And it just goes through for all the different experiments. And there are 32 experiments in this book, not including the two introductory ones. Now, I do like that they have really marked things. So anything that you're going to be doing with electronics, electronic parts, this is everything that's going to be inside of here. I don't want to open this until I'm ready to do this. It keeps it all nice and contained. 
there's some different tools that just don't really fit into, let's see, a, oh, a multimeter. In our house, we probably have a lot of this stuff because my husband's a science geek, but that's okay. I'd rather have everything in one spot for me. There's a bunch of miscellaneous things that they fit inside the tubes. For the Momentum Lab, here's what you need. The acrylic lens and prism. And these are just some rubber stopper, rubber bands, and white cord. The convex, oops, convex mirrors, lenses, stuff like that. So that's when we get to light. Some bar magnets, copper wire. That's going to be electricity. There's some more here. There's a lot of different pulleys when we're doing the initial stuff, the mechanics, the force, stuff like that. So here's the C-clamp and the pulley clamp, which are not things you necessarily have lying around your house. A protractor, which is going to be using, they can use for measurements too. They've got the millimeters and centimeters here. We have a board that some of the things you're going to be using this board and clamping it onto something. Oh, what a oh. 9 volt battery. Whoops. Graduated cylinder. We have some ball weights and they tell you how much they weigh so when they're doing their experiment they can make sure they have that as accurate as possible. And I know from looking I'm going to in that B experiment we're going to be using this aluminum bar so I'm going to be pulling that out of here. There's some different cloth. I'll put that back in here. This one's kind of interesting. This is a spark timer. So it's a way to get your accurate measurements over time. It has a little, this paper that comes out that you're going to be doing things to record. I'll put that back in. Something else I'll be using tomorrow, a spring scale. So as you can see, here's the spring. And when you attach your weight here, going to measure in oops it's going to measure in grams so i know i need this for tomorrow so i'm keeping this out and then we have two cars that are perfect the sizing when they mention that one board when you're going to be doing ramps this is the per the perfect sizing i suppose if you really wanted to and you're like me and you have lots of Pinewood Derby cars lying around the house that still work. You could be pulling that out. You just have to be making measurements. Okay. Metavive technology. Tuning bar, I believe. A professional timer. A tape measure. Oops. Upside down. that where you can maybe see it so this is all going to be centimeters because when we're doing a lot of our science we want to keep it in metric units that's what's considered acceptable and that's pretty much what is inside of the kit for physics